This is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 5th of March, 2021. Today we start off with a little history lesson. Because if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. <coughs> also, if you haven't followed the Kassau Call to Action, or if you live in Canada, and if you haven't followed the CVA Let Your Voices Be Heard, or if you're in another part of the world and you haven't joined the World Vapors Alliance or join the region's vape advocacy organization like CAFRA or ATHRA or any of the other ones that I have listed in the description below to become an advocate for your rights, it may soon be too late to do any good. Because the World Health Organization has a Trojan horse play that's marching along into every government entity across the globe. And they're carefully crafting legislation every day to erode your access to safer harm reduction products. Ah! Perfect example we talked about last week. The poorest state in all the United States, West Virginia. Yeah, well, Governor Jim Justice is marching along with his agenda. And you know, there must not have been a lot of vapors who contacted him about the dollar per milliliter tax on e-liquid. Nope. So he's marching along with it. And he's so generous, because I'm sure somebody reached out to him. He's so generous that he dropped the tax rate from a dollar per milliliter to 75 cents per milliliter. And you know, not to hit a gift horse in the mouth for cutting the rate, but who the hell is going to pay $45 tax on a 60 mil bottle? Nope let alone $75 tax on a 100 mil bottle or $90 tax on a 120 mil bottle of e-liquid? Ah! You know, if a West Virginia vapor wants their e-liquid, they're gonna have to make their own or they're gonna have to go and smuggle it from a neighboring state where the taxes are either affordable or non-existent. Whoops. Why do people keep voting into offices morons who refuse to learn from history? <laughs> Excessive tax rates always create substantial black and gray market changes that never result in the state getting the revenue that they planned on when they implement these ridiculous tax rates. Whoops. And I got data to back that up. Well, New Mexico Senator Linda Lopez is making the exact same mistake because she introduced Senate Bill 197, which is going to tax e-liquids 83%. So a $30 bottle of e-liquid is not going to cost you $55. If that doesn't even include the seller and distribution excise tax changes that she's proposing. And if that's not enough to get you to advocate for your rights, well, how about there's a study documenting that this tax increase, because it disproportionately impacts low-income consumers, well, if this tax gets passed, it's going to cause a 42% increase in the number of New Mexicans filing for supplemental nutrition assistance because they won't be able to afford the food that they need to eat if they have to pay the increased taxes for their vice. Or they're gonna have to resort to the black market that you just doubled in size by in instilling these excise taxes and this drastic tax rate changes. <laughs> Speaking of elected officials regretting their legislative decisions, in Canada, a green MLA who voted for the Prince Edward Island flavor ban, now says, well, the flavor ban goes too far. He thought that the ban would only affect children. And you know, adults are still gonna have options. Nope. Seriously? Nope. The ban went into effect March 1st, and now, as usual, after the fact, adults are complaining going, hey man, I can't get my favorite vape flavor to stay off of deadly combustible cigarettes. Oh, I better go and contact my uh, representative and do something about this. It's too late. They already passed the law. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's not good. Guess the elected official missed the information sheet from Health Canada. 
You know the one saying that vaping is less harmful than smoking and switching to vapes may reduce health risks for smokers who can't or don't want to quit using nicotine? Whoops. Guess he also missed the evidence that vaping as a cessation tool is a very effective method to quit smoking and far less harmful alternative for those that want to continue using nicotine. You know, when they asked him why he voted for the flavor ban, he said he only wanted to get rid of flavors with names like cotton candy that attracted to kids and, you know, replace them with things like, you know, product numbers. What a schmuck. He's the one that passed the law. He's the one that voted yes. Yes, I want I want to ban flavors. And now he's acting stupid. Like, like he expects me to go into a vape shop and, you know, treat it like some fast food joint. You know, treat it like McDonald's going and order by number. Or or order it like that you do, you know, when you order for Chinese out, takeout. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to have a number one. And what else do you have on the menu? Oh, I'll take a number five and a number nine. And how about a number 12? And I think I'll take a number 27. Oh, and while you're at it, could you give me a smock scar 18 with a couple boxes of coils to go along with it? Be a good lad, would you? Thank you. Seriously? Well? In Manitoba, smoking kills more than 2,000 Manitobans every year. So, what are the legislators over there going to be doing about it? Well, they proposed the shortest bill in history. Get fucked. Bill 56. Yeah. It's titled the Smoking and Vapor Products Control Amendment Act. You want me to sum it up for you? Are you ready? I better take a drink because it's really long. Okay, here's the bill. Section 9.4 is repealed. Yep, that's it. What, you don't know what section 9.4 is? Well, see, that was the section that allowed local reserves to have their own bylaws. Nope, not anymore. The federal government must protect youth from secondhand e-cigarette smoke which would surely get another generation addicted to tobacco if, if they don't drastically make these laws, these prohibitionist agendas, get pushed through government. Yeah? I guess I need to refer them to Health Canada statement that I spoke about earlier. Whoops. Or maybe I just need to remind them that the vape that comes out of this, the vapor that comes out of this, it's not smoke. And it lacks the thousands upon thousands of chemicals that is present in smoke. You can't treat cigarettes and electronic cigarettes as the same thing because they're not. Get fucked. Oh, and I, I guess I should be grateful and thank them, you know, for allowing the First Nations to conduct their ceremonial and traditional use of tobacco. Nope. So nice of you to respect their customs, even though you just strip them of their rights in favor of Manitoba laws that you want to make and decide for them what their laws should be. Huh? Who gave you supreme authority? How about in New Zealand? The Treasury released the Crown accounts for the last seven months. Oh, yeah. And tobacco tax revenue dropped almost $700 million last year. That's great news, right? It means that more people are quitting smoking completely, or they're at least switching to a safer alternative product, right? Well, if you live in New Zealand, you better speak up before they decide to raise the taxes again to make up for the revenue shortfall. Whoops. And speaking of revenue shortfalls, isn't that the big problem with sin taxes? You know, when they keep jacking up the taxes to get you to, you know, use less? Well, what happens when they jack them up so high that it actually works? And people stop buying it 
Or they just buy it on the black market and don't pay any taxes to anybody. Whoops. What happens when it works? Huh? Where's the government going to get the funding that they were getting from the sin taxes? Oh. Maybe that's why they're going around and legalizing weed all across the country and all across the world. Maybe. Maybe if people don't want to pay the sin taxes on tobacco or pay the sin taxes on alcohol, maybe they'll be willing to pay them on weed. Yeah, pay it, pay the taxes on cannabis. Well, that's what's coming next. You honestly didn't think they were going to leave you alone, did you? I wonder how many weed farms or cannabis labs Bloomberg owns. Whoops. Where's he going to jump on the prohibition bandwagon there too? You know, regardless, his puppet organization, well, you know, the World Health Organization that he's the ambassador of, it's calling for an outlaw to all open tank systems. Yeah, because you're not competent enough to decide what to put in your vape. Oh no, must be a closed tank system and only the government's allowed to decide what goes into your vape? Yeah, and what choices you have and what concentrations you're allowed to have access to. Thank God CAFRA is calling out the World Health Organization for his prohibitionist tactics. And vapors all across Asia need to stand up to let your voices be heard too before it's too late. Tell your government that the latest report from Public Health England reconfirmed that vaping is at least 95% less harmful than traditional cigarettes, and that they are a very effective way to successfully quit smoking, unlike pharmaceutical products, regardless of where you live. Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, India, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Russia, North or South America, science is science and data continues to show the health benefits of tobacco harm reduction products. Vaping saves lives and adds quality of life to the years you have left to live. All it takes is finding the right flavored liquid. Vaporized in the right device and anyone can easily quit smoking. You know, speaking of finding the right flavored e-liquid for your vape, how about this week we look at Indonesia Dream Juice? Yeah. And I got an article titled Everything You Need to Know About Buying E-Juice Online. Yeah. Let's dive right in. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here is the history lesson. We must go over this once again because people just don't seem to understand. People are not standing up and fighting for their rights. They are thinking, oh, I'm okay because you know, there's a vape shop in my town and they'll still be able to get stuff so I don't need to stand up. Yeah? How about let me remind you of this little lesson in history. In Germany, they came for the communists. You know, I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. And then they came for the Jews. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for the Catholics. And I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. And then they came for me. And by that time, no one was left to speak up. Well, the sad reality is that's where we stand today. Vapors across the globe need to stand up for their rights and quit allowing these elected officials to make these detrimental laws. There's so many people that are ill-informed or are not informed at all or just complacent. Oh, well, I'll still be able to get stuff. I'm okay. I don't have to worry about it. Well, worst case scenario, I'll go back to smoking cigarettes. What? Are you serious? 
That is not the alternative. Take five minutes out of your day and go right to your elected officials. Pick up the phone and give them a ring and tell them how you think. Tell them what you feel. Stop it before it's too late. Because once it's too late, too late. Get fucked. Here we got an article published in Bloomberg. Pandemic smoke break bodes ill for big tobacco. Yeah, we talked about this before. About, you know, how the cigarette sales were declining. And then poof. Oh, man. They went back up this year. Yeah, we talked about that. And the vaping rates, they went down too. Well, that's not good news. Because people are switching back to combustible tobacco from the safer alternative. Word needs to get out. I know there's plenty of people out there, vaping's a community, and there's plenty of people that have converted their whole family over to vapors to give up their deadly combustible habits. But politicians are making it harder and harder for you to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco because they want your tax money. Governor Jim Justice submits his income tax plan bill to West Virginia legislature. We talked about this last week. He wanted to impose a dollar per milliliter tax on e-liquid. Well, he's modified that plan. Somebody must have called him up and says, are you nuts? Well, I'd love to tell you that, you know, it's a good rate. But 75 cents per milliliter tax, that's not a good rate. Nobody is going to pay that much tax. So what happens when people are faced with Excessive tax rates. What happens? Oh, there's the black market that will come along and say, hey man, you don't need to buy the e-liquid in the store because I'm going to make a trip to Ohio for you. All right? How many you want me to bring back for you? Ohio only has a 10 cent per milliliter tax. So we can go over there and get our stuff. Well, you can come along, man. We're just making a day trip out of it. Or you go to Kentucky. Yeah? Oh, you don't know what the tax rates are? Don't worry. I got charts and all kinds of data for you guys to figure out where to go to if your tax rates are too high. Yeah. But before that, well, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen around you. It's called smuggling. Yeah. When cigarette taxes are raised excessively, guess what people do? Well, they go somewhere where the taxes aren't that high and they get their stuff. Because when people want their stuff, they're gonna go get it. Whoops. Well, here we have a wonderful chart from the Tax Foundation that shows what happens when you take and apply excessive excise taxes. Smuggling rates go up. People don't buy the product in your state when their taxes are too high, but they still buy the product. And don't go to the neighboring state and bet it. Or they'll buy it from somebody that did that and brought it back and is going to charge less for a carton of cigarettes in this case or a bottle of e-liquid and the cost for you to go to a store and buy it so your stores are going to suffer the state coffers aren't going to get what they're expecting to get and there's going to be a bunch of people turned into crooks because now they're smugglers yeah how cigarette smuggling by state well look at this chart well, New York has the highest tax rate, so therefore, well, they have a lot of people smuggling cigarettes into New York. Guess what? California has a high tax rate, so 
those, those, those have a lot of smugglers in there too. All around the country. Oh, look. There's states that don't have a lot of tax rates, so guess what happens? Well, people go there to buy their stuff, and then they bring it home. And they take care of their friends and their family. Wow. And for some people, they look at this as a business opportunity. Oh, there's a lot of money to be made here. You don't believe me? Just look up cigarette smuggling. Look at all the different ways that people smuggle their cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, look at that. On the bottom of a lorry. Oh, somebody decided they were gonna get really sneaky and they cast it in concrete. Well, that's a lot of cigarettes. Oh, good thing those things come with covers in the back. When the door's closed, you can't even see that's in there. Oh, they get really creative, don't they? Oh, look at that. They even hollowed out a tree. Wow. Boy, these laws really stop a lot of people from doing things, don't it? Don't they? Oh, man. Unbelievable. Oh, you got a whole warehouse full of them. Oh, people actually take a tire off, fill it up with stuff, and then put it in there and drive across the border. Oh, that's a big surprise there, huh? Not really. Yeah? Well, how about New Mexico? They're raising the taxes. Because, see, they lost money, and they don't know how they're going to be able to survive... So we'll just raise the taxes some more. Yeah, tobacco's bad. Sin tax. We're gonna sin tax the heck out of it. Yeah? What's gonna happen when you raise the taxes again? You just raised the taxes 34 cents a pack. The last session. Well, now you're gonna raise them again. 83% increase. Get fucked. It says, Vapor taxes would go from 50 cents to $3.32. A cartridge, but that doesn't apply for e-liquid. E-liquid is going to get taxed the same as chewing tobacco. 83%. Yeah. So if you live in New Mexico, you can stock up or just go to the states around you because they don't have this kind of crazy tax. Just don't get caught crossing the border. Could you go to jail for smuggling? Whoops. Yeah? Want to know what your tax rates are in different states? Tax Foundation's got you covered, baby. Ohio, 10 cents per milliliter. Pennsylvania, 40% of wholesale products. New York is 20% of retail. For what's not banned. Look at all these states that are gray. That don't have any excise taxes imported on vape stuff. Oh, guess I'm going to have to go visit my son because his state has no taxes on it. Well, that's if they don't pass the flavor ban. What a nanny state. Aww. What a nanny state the whole country's turning into. No, that's a bit of a problem. And is it going to stop people? Ah! Nope. Here we have an article in Vice where we had somebody that shadowed a jewel smuggler who was also a teenager on a trip across the border because that's what kids are going to do. When kids want something, they don't care about the laws. They're just going to go get what they want. We talked about that last week in the news. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changing is the legislatures are passing these ridiculous laws. And then every once in a while, some of them, will they regret their decision and go, Oh, I fucked up. I shouldn't have voted yes for that. Well, that's a bad thing, actually, because... There's a lot of people that are going to get hurt because I voted yes. Yes on the flavor ban. Yeah? Well, a lot of people 
are not staying apprised of what's going on around them until it actually affects them. And actually, by that point, it's too late. Well, ban went into effect March 1st. Yeah, Prince Edward Island. Flavor ban. And a schmuck voted for it. And now, all the adults are like, hey man, where'd all my flavors go? I just ran out of car. I'm running to the store to get them and there's no flavors. All I got is tobacco. Whoops. Well, I don't want tobacco e-liquid. I started vaping to get away from tobacco. And now you're gonna force me to use tobacco flavor? No, thank you. I'll just vape unflavored liquid, worst case scenario. Or I'll just order some flavoring and mix up my own flavors. Oh, bet you didn't think about that when you were voting yes on the flavor ban. Hmm, this industry got started with people at home going, I bet that would taste good if I put that in there. Well, then they tried it. Well, unfortunately, some places, that's what it's going to have to go back to. Whoops. The only good thing about that is the brotherhood might come back. The culture of close-knit communities of people working together. Yeah. You can read the article about this schmuck. Typical politician lying through his teeth. Get fucked. Oh, I thought, I didn't know that they were going to just totally outlaw it. Oh, man. Got a blue slushy. I thought they were just going to rename it, call it like number 105. Huh? Why are you such a moron? How are you still in office? You know how many people are going to die because of your choice to ban flavors? Or you don't care, do you? Gotta protect little Timmy and little Tina. Well, got a politician in Manitoba is jumping down the same bandwagon. Yeah, getting all high and mighty. And he says, we need to ban all tobacco all electronic cigarettes, even marijuana that goes into vapes because we need to protect the youth from becoming the next generation of addicted users. Like you can put people in the bubbles for their whole life and stop them from making any bad mistakes, huh? Nope. Yeah, you could be their, their little nanny and walk them through their whole life Make sure they have everything they ever need? Nope. Are you? Nope. Oh, no, you're not? Nope. You're just going to tell them what to do and then walk away and tell somebody else what to go do. Because you enjoy getting off on doing that, huh? How about new? No? You have some. You have a better reason for this? Not according to the article I see here. Saying that smoking kills more than 2,000 Manitobans every year. Wow. Well, a common person would say, we need to encourage those that are still smoking to switch to a safer alternative. If they choose not to quit. <laughs> Prohibition doesn't work. Quit or die has never worked. When people are ready, then they make the choice and they stick with it. And there's going to be some people that are going to try it, but they're not ready for it yet. And they'll go fall off the wagon. That's okay. It's a choice they have to make. Aww. Well, they proposed this lovely new Bill 56. And the whole purpose of this is to eliminate the part of the law that provided an exception to where the laws had to be followed. We'll see, the exception was penitentiaries, federally regulated airports, Canadian forces bases, 
or any other place or premise that was occupied for federal work or undertaking or business or on lands reserved for Indians because they're sovereign nations, sovereign lands, or should be treated as such. Well, this law simply eliminated the exclusion clause in the law that's been there since 1990. 1991, I believe. Yeah. And there was an exception um, for smoking cannabis and using e-cigarettes to vaporize e-substance containing cannabis apply in places and premises and lands set out in the subsection, meaning there was an exclusion for that. Well, that's gone now. Poof, one change to the law and it rewrites the whole meaning. Kind of like how in the omnibus bill they redefined everything that could possibly be used as an ENDS device as a tobacco product. And some people haven't caught on to the fact yet that all existing legislation that applies to tobacco will now applies to the vape products too. Regardless of whether you're using nicotine or cannabis or THC or whatever you put in it, it's not a tobacco product and falls under the same regulations. It's gonna be a lot of court cases. A lot of lawyers are gonna get rich over this because it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time, especially the way that it's worded. I'm surprised that the lawyers that are fighting for the Supreme Court to hear their case haven't jumped on board and says, whoa, wait a minute. You cannot pass a law that just generally applies to whatever. Government is actually required to specify that a law applies to this and this and this and this. They have to specify what it applies to. They can't say anything that's white and floofy will be uh, impacted by this law. And you're going to be like, whoa, wait a minute, dude. That's a towel. But that has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Well, that's not what the law says. So I'm waiting for this law that they passed in the omnibus bill to be found unconstitutional because you can't just say, poof, done. And not post office, go make up some law or rule that you're supposed to enforce it. What the hell are you even talking about? You never defined what you're talking about. It's a trap. I'm sorry. You're here to come and watch the news and pay attention to the news, not hear me rant and toot and holler. Because here's the actual bill. This is literally it. This is the whole thing. It says that this previous bill, this previous act, this section of it is repealed and will come into force the day that it receives royal assent. You think there aren't sneaky politicians everywhere across the world that don't do stuff like this all the time? You get nothing. You <laughs> lose. But wait, there's more. Well, let's go over New Zealand. We've looked up New Zealand and their website. They're in favor because they recognize vaping as tobacco harm reduction, right? Not so fast. Tobacco tax revenue plunges as Kiwis kick the habit. Yeah. Almost fell by half as Kiwis kick the smoking habit. And they released the report, the Treasury released the report of it and the figures. And you mean to tell me that there isn't a politician there that's frothing at the mouth going, how are we going to deal with this revenue shortfall? We wanted them to quit smoking, but now guess what? They quit and we don't have any tax money. Whoops. Well, we're going to tax something else. How about no? Don't know. 
The New Zealand Taxpayers Union spokesman said smokers were disproportionately low income and the government should allow the downward trend in tax takings to continue. How many governments do you know that are good or happy when the tax revenue continues to decline? You may send me a list. Or maybe leave a, a comment in the description below if your government is happy when their tax revenue declines. I don't know of any. There's already considerations in place about proposed law changes affecting vaping products. They've already limited it. We've already covered how there's more stores popping up because, yeah, the more limitations you put on, the more limited you are on where you can go and get your stuff. Am I supposed to be angry with you or am I supposed to be enjoying this right now? Well, Michael Bloomberg and his lovely organization, the World Health Organization. I mean, this is in 1984. The World Health Organization is purposely doing things that are contrary to your health you're a smoker tell me how this makes any sense i'd love to hear about it if if you can explain to me why they do this because i noticed there was a bunch of people that started watching my stuff that um you don't like it well tell me about why you don't like it then because to my knowledge i just speak the truth on what I can find and report the truth. Report what my personal experience is. Hmm? You, you were one of those prohibitionist nannies out there? Yeah. Well, CAFRA is asking everybody right now, if you live in the Asia, across Asia, Speak up and let people know that you are not happy with this. Do it! Just do it! Moving on. CAFRA stands up and says that the World Health Organization's recommended ban on open tank systems, on vaping open tank systems, it's only going to create more smokers. Wow. It's public, this PR release comes from Manila in the Philippines. And Kafra stood up before and told them and pointed at the finger of Bloomberg on how Bloomberg is trying to influence the FDA and how that's illegal, both in that country and in the United States. But Bloomberg has no problem going around and touting how he's the ambassador for the World Health Organization on the war against tobacco. Yeah. How's the war on drugs going? Huh? Is that working really good? Oh, how about the war on the opioids? The opioid epidemic we have going on in this country? How's that working out? We got that under control? What? Oh, the pharmaceutical industry is profiting from it, so we make a lot of noise, but don't really do anything about it. Well, that's not what they're doing with tobacco harm reduction. They're trying to make as little noise as possible, but pass as many laws in the background, and then people don't catch on to it until it's too late. Well, here we have the World Health Organization now insisting that we got to get rid of open tank systems because, you know, people can put whatever in them. Well, yeah. You put vegetable glycerin in it and you put some flavorings in it. And if you choose to use nicotine, you can add that in there. And for the cannabis users, they have their own way of doing things. And you don't like it. Because you want to be a nanny and tell people how to live their lives. Well, Kafra says, no, you aren't going to be telling us how to live your life. 
And Kaffir's saying, hey, all you vapors out there, millions of vapors all across Asia, you need to stand up and tell your elected officials what you think of the World Health Organization's idea to ban open tank systems. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until it's banned in your country because it's 10 times harder to reverse a law than it is to get one enacted, let alone get one reversed. A new report published by World Health Organization's Tobacco Regulatory Committee recommends nearly all vapes be banned, especially so-called open systems, because they're not regulated and there's no way that you can effectively regulate it. Nope. Well, yeah, because you could make your own e-liquid. Yeah, for a couple bucks. It's really, really cheap. Like, why the heck were we paying $40 for a bottle like this when it costs the manufacturer of that less than five bucks to make? When that includes the labeling and the bottling, in the distribution. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's not good. They don't like that because they can't regulate it. There's too many variables for them to write legislation that equally applies to everything. Get fucked. Because see, when you have little pod systems like this, they want you to buy this pod that is completely sealed and only they can determine what goes in it and what concentration you're allowed to have. How about new? Hmm. I'm not cool with that. Are you cool with that? How about new? Well, if you're not cool with that, get fucked. You need to become an advocate. Wow. And speak up. Wow. If you're in the United States, follow the Kasak call to action. That was easy. And tell them. No, no, this is wrong. It's not practical for you to, to try and regulate something because if I go into a vape shop, this cotton is gonna be taxed. But I could go into a drugstore and buy that for a couple bucks or less and not have to pay any tax on it because it's just cotton. Whoops. Regardless of where you live in the world, you need to find a local organization that stands up for vapors' rights, and you need to belong to them, and you need to follow their recommendations on when to write your legislatures. That was easy. Because if you don't, they're going to keep stripping your rights. <laughs> CAFR is calling on governments to adopt evidence-based common sense regulations for all vaping products. And I'm sorry if it doesn't make your job easier as a lawmaker, because this needs to have different regulations than this. And Juul has to be a separate category. Get fucked. Closed tank systems just because they make it simple for you as a regulator to pass a law saying, oh, there's a $3 tax per cartridge. Get fucked. Well, that's not gonna work with an open tank system. And if you don't make legislation that's common sense, that's affordable and people can follow it, all you're gonna do is drive the black market to pop up everywhere. Whoops. It isn't just gonna be teenagers sending little beauty packets to their friends to hide their stuff. You're gonna have every adult consumer out there doing the same thing. Whoops. Well, take a look at the link in the description below because like I said, this is everywhere. Here we have an article from New Delhi this is published in Punjab News Express. And as you might already know, India 
is the toughest of all the countries out there because they straight up just ban shit outright. They don't care. And they know that there's going to be a black market. But that's okay. Because the prison industrial complex needs new customers to fill the jail cells. Yeah. Get fucked. How about new? World Health Organization's attitude to e-cigarettes has been devastating for millions and millions of smokers and vapors alike all around the world. Kaffer said it's only through regulating products that vapors can remain protected, encouraged to stop smoking, and a result, achieve good public health outcomes. Link in the description if you want to read the whole article yourself. And I mentioned in the introduction, the UK has finally gotten around to publishing its latest report and has added to the growing evidence that vaping, also known as e-cigarettes, is an effective tool for getting cigarette smokers to quit. Wow. And this new evidence update released by Public Health England at the end of February is its seventh independent report on vaping in England and reconfirms that vaping is 95% less harmful than traditional cigarettes. I was hoping that the number was actually going to be raised because I've got an actual video out where it says that it's 97% because that's what the number was that they were originally talking about saying, but they got too much flack over it because technically... If you have an open tank system, people can put whatever they want in it. Hence the reason why we have the Avali outbreak. Because see, people when they're not informed want to make their own stuff because they can't afford to go to the store and buy it that's commercially made in ISO clean room facility. They'll put whatever they have available to them in it. And if they happen to use a flavoring that's oil based, well, then they're going to get lipoid pneumonia. And then you're going to be the next news story about how it's so horrible. We need to just ban it all together. But that's not actually going to work. That's actually going to make the problem worse. Well, if you just simply follow the science, and Public Health England has updated this now for the seventh time to let people know that electronic cigarettes save lives. They help people quit smoking. They're more effective to quit smoking than pharmaceutical products. Wow. Who would have thought? I mean, besides the people that actually successfully quit smoking with vaping. However, the bad propaganda and the scare tactics are working because 38% of respondents believe that vaping was as harmful as smoking. And 15% of people actually thought that it was more harmful than smoking, which is the exact opposite of what science tells us. The best thing that a smoker can do to stop smoking completely, and the evidence shows that vaping is one of the most effective quit aids available, helps around 50,000 smokers quit a year in England alone. The evidence has been clear for some time and we know it's not risk-free and nobody's ever said that it's completely risk-free, but it is far less harmful than smoking. So the quicker you decide to pick up vaping, the more potential health savings you're gonna achieve. Wow. Take a look at the link in the description. So here we have liquid vape creamy fragrance, many popular vapor Indonesia. Mm, close enough. We have Indonesia Dream Juice CEO and founder has profited in this trend over the last five years since he joined the vape industry. Well, what does he do? He makes e-liquid. And as you can see, 
Well, he's using the same standards that we saw last week in the news in the ISO clean room. Well, you got people wearing gloves and masks and gums and goggles and hair nets. And we have a little assembly line set up here where they can make and package e-liquid. Wow, well, that's pretty cool, huh? They're able to produce 100,000 to 150,000 bottles of liquid per month. Wow. 90% of Java Island absorbs the largest sales after legalizing in 2018. The IDJ pays the tax ribbon according to government regulations 57%. Wow. 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 That's a lot of tax. But when you have a relatively consistent tax schedule, people pay what they have to pay to keep getting access to a safer nicotine product. And they have almost a hundred flavors. Yeah, that's amazing. You can take a look at the link in the description below if you want to read the actual article. Because we've got another one here for you. I love these articles, especially these ones that are sponsored content. It's not actually sponsored content. It's not like they paid the, the zebra to publish this article. What they did is, and the zebra is actually a pretty cool thing. And I picked this, this web, web website for a single reason. They only publish good news. You believe that? Well, let's take a look at this article because with the US vape mail ban, well, there's gonna be a lot of people ordering e-liquid from another country because as long as there's money to be made, well, people are gonna ship stuff. If there's money to be made, they're gonna ship it. And if you actually are somebody who has e-liquid here in this country, well, all you gotta do is have the stuff manufactured and shipped to a warehouse and say, oh, I don't know, Canada or Mexico, and then have your warehouse fulfill the order and send it in across the border. You know, China's gonna do it. You know, there's gonna be plenty of people buying e-liquid from China. Wow. Well, let's find out what it takes to order e-juice online safely. I think that might be a good idea with the impending vape mail ban. I know everybody's like, oh, just wait. Regulations, they'll, they'll get them hammered out. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be making my own, but there's gonna be people out there that don't want to learn how to make their own. I don't care how simple you make it. It really is simple. There's gonna be people out there that are just gonna order it because it's just so much easier. And I understand, that's why we have stock coils. Not everybody wants to, you know, get into rebuildables. That's fine. You'll be able to order your coils from China. And the uh, US Customs is gonna catch some of them, but not the majority of them. There's way too many people that are gonna be ordering stuff for them to catch even a percentage of them, a measurable percentage. That's a joke. All right, let's take a look at this. Is it legal to buy nicotine vapes online? Well, purchasing tobacco products, including nicotine vapes and nicotine e-juice is entirely legal under US federal law. Sorta. Of. In fact, it is relatively unregulated. That, in my opinion, is not true. Adults over the age of 21 can easily find and buy nicotine vapes online. Yeah. Anybody can find vapes online. Just ask a teenager to show you their TikTok. I guarantee you, they'll be able to show you where to get nicotine vapes and cannabis vapes. 
if not one of the other psychedelic drugs that are available out on the market nowadays? Well, this article is going to share everything you need to know about purchasing e-juice, vapes, and vape accessories online in this quick guide. What products can you find online? Well, no matter what it is you most enjoy, well, you'll be able to find it online. Online vape sellers will often have more extensive and higher quality inventories than small business and local vape shops. Well, especially now that they have to have everything couriered in. The wide assortment of vape products allows consumers to browse products from dozens of brands sold nationwide. I mean internationally? Whereas your vape store has physical limits, and the internet is limitless worldwide possibilities. Well, you'll be able to get disposables, you'll be able to get e-juice, you'll be able to get accessories, and is it going to be legal to mail nicotine products? Well, licensed dealers and sellers of nicotine products are permitted to send these items via private post using UPS and FedEx. As long as they don't tell them what's in it. The USPS currently does not ship nicotine products. Well, they did. Though some business-to-business -business postage may be acceptable, we hope, don't know yet. However, you will be able to order stuff online, and there will be countries that will follow the rules and follow the laws. Here's a little experiment for you to do. I already know the results because I did this a while back. Watching the reviews and watching the different things out there, Vic always talks about using cotton gods. You know, when he puts cotton in his rebuildable atomizers. And I'm like, man, it'd be nice to be able to get some cotton gods. So I did some internet search and nobody around here has it. Something that's available in England. So I got online and I'm like, oh, Amazon has it. Oh, I should be able to order it. It's just cotton, right? Well, go on to amazon.com and you will not find any vape stuff. You go to amazon.ca for Canada, you're gonna get a different search result. Oh, and if you go to the amazon.uk.co, that's the O.UK. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what it is. But you could buy any vape stuff online. Well, I wish the FDA would get off its butt and classify vapor products as a tobacco cessation product because even in the United States, if a vape device was classified as a tobacco cessation product, well, then you'd be able to buy it right on Amazon. And have it delivered to your house the very next day. It's amazing. But that's not what the laws are in this country. And that's not what the way the regulations are right now. So, it's going to be a whole new world after April. And there's going to be some websites that are going to stay up operational. And there's going to be websites and online vendors that are going to find couriers to deliver it. And maybe at some point in time, we will have literally nationwide coverage of online vape ordering. But for now, there's a lot of people getting screwed from getting stuff. But you'll still be able to order it, especially from China, especially from other countries. Just have to do a little more digging. They're making it harder and harder for us to be able to get access to a safer alternative. <laughs> My message to you is stick around. Fight's not over. This is certainly not going away. And I'm in the process, as you could tell, I've been working on the liquid barn review. It's taking quite a bit of time, not because, you know, it's complicated or I don't understand what I'm doing. It's just, I ordered a bunch of stuff. First thing I did was make my wife her muffin man, which she's already loving it. And 
I want to go through each of the flavors that I ordered and mix them all up before I actually put up the review. So if you're wondering why I haven't posted anything besides the news, I'm working on it. And this one's going to take a, a good bit of while. And I also got other orders coming in from other flavors and stuff. Because one of the things that I need to make is a strawberry crunch bar e-liquid. My wife was like, all right, if you're going to order stuff, I need you to order me whatever it takes to make this. So I found a recipe and that's what I'm going to do. So stick around. It'll be coming on the channel. Got to do reviews. I mean, don't know if the recipe's any good or not until you review it. It's not going to be a how-to channel. But I'm going to stick up and we're going to find a way to get through this all together. Because uh, you need to do whatever it takes to stay off of deadly combustible cigarettes. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for today. The 5th of March. Woo. Already March 2021. My message to you as always. Keep on vaping. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll catch you later.